Find out what's going on. Get involved. Change things from the inside. Make a difference. Take pride. Multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. All new Simply the Best. Be merry and bright. A Christmas wonderland. Christmas means a little bit more for the Bardens. It's been 20 years of Christmas tradition. Putting up a wonderful and festive display of outdoor Christmas decorations. Christmas lights right in their front yard. It is massive. Weeks ago, somebody tried to steal the Christmas tradition from the Bardens. Brett was heartbroken, but not for long. Beautiful friends helped him put the whole thing together again. On the show, my merry moment with Brett, and a call for donation for Typhoon survivors in the Philippines through the Canadian Red Cross Society. Get ready to be inspired and have a merry, merry Christmas. All these coming up. Hello everybody! Whether you like it or not, Christmas is here and the virus can't stop it. We have a great show for you guys. They said that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. I love Christmas. Please watch. Okay, let's see if the Grinch is around Brett's residence again. Or maybe the front yard. Oh my gosh, look at this. Isn't this winter wonderland? This is super amazing. Good. Brett. Oh my gosh. Santa Brett. <laughs> it's nice to be here. It's so festive. Do you do this every year? Every year we do this. That's amazing. Um, tell me, uh, how long did it take you to, to finish this? Is it finished? Is it done? Or you, you are still decorating? It's pretty much done. We may have a few lights to add, but uh, we start November 1st and it takes us a few weekends to do it. And uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of crawling around on the ground, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a love that we like to do for all the children and families that come here to see it. Brett, I heard that uh, heartbreaking um, post that you did a while back that uh, somebody cut all the the lights, the wire, a lot of wires. Oh. So uh, when we were starting to set up, we, uh, we came out one night and we turned on the lights and we noticed uh, a, a lot of them were not working. And somebody had come here and cut the wires on a number of the strands. And uh, it was heartbreaking. We found over 30 light bulbs cut from the strands. You know, we've had security cameras. We've been going over the footage and we're trying to figure out who cut the strands. Um, we have some shadows, but we still haven't found the Grinch who did it. Right now, we are looking for the Grinch who did it. So, Brett, you've been doing this every year. When I was growing up and when I was a little kid, my family, we used to go around and see lights all around uh, the city, um, go out for a few hours every other night. And it used to bring so much joy for our family. And uh, to do a display and to give back to the community uh, and bring joy and happiness to families during a, a tough time of the year, um, especially this year with uh, COVID. Um, it's, it's just 
it, it's so warm and heartfelt um, when you see the smiles on the kids' faces. A little while ago, while we were setting up, there was a car. There was a vehicle with, the, with kids inside, and they were really thrilled. How do you feel when you hear children just like, you know, all the screams and, and the excitement? It makes everything worthwhile. Um, the amount of time and money it takes to put on a display like this every year, um, to see their faces and their reactions, it's just priceless, and it's why we do what we do. Did you just start with just one? one decoration, maybe a Santa, and then all of a sudden it just grew through the years? Absolutely. How many years now? Uh, gosh, we must be getting close to 20 years. Um, we started with just lights and then eventually we put icicle lights up and then we did lights on the hedge and then I built these arches, um, these light the, arches. Yeah, you did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's pipe and we put them together and we Look built the this. little connections and um, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun to do it over the years. I enjoy doing it and my family loves doing it as well. That's amazing. So these arches here, can you come to my house, Brett, and <laughs> build arches for me too? <laughs> you, you, you finished all this two, a week ago? Just a few days ago, even uh, a few hours ago, I was replacing light bulbs that were burnt out. So it's, a, it's an ongoing um, operation here <laughs> at Christmas Wonderland. I heard that there were some people who helped you. Who are these people? Who are these wonderful people who helped you, you know, put this together to, to, you know, for you guys to continue your Christmas uh, decoration tradition every year? Yeah, so my family come out every year to help do this. Um, this year, because of the uh, incident where we had over about a about a thousand dollars worth of damage. Oh um, my gosh! Yeah, it was quite oh. extreme. Uh, a group of friends from uh, the IBEW, uh, which is the Electrical Workers uh, Union, came over and uh, fused back uh, a number of the wires um, so they could become usable again. Um, we're so thankful that they came out and they did this and they brought Christmas back. Otherwise, these would all be dark this year because I wouldn't have had time to fix them. Oh my gosh, Christmas is back over here in Surrey, right in front of Brett's residence and Brett's beautiful home. Brett, this is just breathtaking. <laughs> Shall I say breathtaking? Yes. Santa's in the window. Santa in the window. I think his, Santa is staying safe. He is. Yeah, he is. Social he, social distancing. He's, uh, getting ready for uh, the holiday season. So you're going to spend Christmas here? Yes, every year we spend Christmas here and our family come and we open up presents and uh, just have a wonderful time. So come on down to uh, the Barden's Christmas Wonderland at 13167 Inverness Place in Surrey, British Columbia. We hope to see you. Uh, take your selfies. Rem remember to stay social distance. Christmas and Happy New Year! Ho 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 ho! You make sure that you are following the rules, okay? Okay, see? Because there are rules here. When you come here, there are also rules. So let's just do it. Brett, are you ready? Come to Brett. Oh my god, this is so breathtaking! And also a quick glimpse of the Barden's indoor Christmas decoration.
we'll be back. Don't go away. The Philippines had been hit with several typhoons a month ago. It, and it was hard to see the deadly devastation that is affecting our Kababayans during this difficult time and not to forget the holiday, the holiday season. Community leaders in Metro Vancouver organized a fundraising for the typhoon victims through the Canadian Red Cross. Joining me today are Spitz President and Founder Narima De La Cruz and founder of Global Pinoy Diaspora Canada, Trini Lopez. How are you both, my beautiful ladies? How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Just getting busy with, with this coming uh, holiday season and all this uh, fundraising event that we're, you know, going, doing for the community. How about you, Narima? Hi, Luisa. Hello, Trini. Um, Hi. I'm doing good. Crazy busy. I know. After, after three months of being um, fully rested, I am now back to crazy busy. <laughs> I know. Okay. Nice to be here with you, ladies. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going through hard times during this pandemic, and I know it's really hard times, and so many people are broke with no income, no job. What do you say to those who have a little bit more this holiday season to share? with our poor Kababayans back in the Philippines? It's hard to start. Um, you know me, I'm a typhoon survivor myself. So it's time a typhoon like this happens. Lots of emotions are coming in. It's, it's, really, it's really hard to explain. Um, it's not just sadness. It's more of a frustration, probably on the geographical location of the Philippines. But then it's nature, what can we do? Um, all we can do after such um, natural calamity is really to act and do something. That's right. So Trini, what do you say? Uh, yes, I, I agree with Narima. It's really a lot of feeling of frustration especially with this coming holiday season and, and the pandemic. And that's very important because that's one of the reasons that I can see that people is really having a much harder time. And also people in giving, you know, for donations for our typhoon victims. And um, yes, I find that it's it's uh, hoping that, you know, this, this fundraising, uh, whatever we will be able to collect, uh, we'll be able to help our Kababayan in the Philippines. And also to me, with all this typhoon in the Philippines, there should be something that should be done about it. Um, we should take on um, some uh, initiatives or some kind of like, I know there's some people that were talking about this because we cannot go on and on because geographically the Philippines is in the area ng, ng mga typhoons and everything plus all the waters that we have. So there's something that the government and even the, I mean, you know, uh, people in the Philippines can do something about it. So they're saying about more about environmental issues that can, you know, be look into uh, trees, you know, uh, planting, um, make those subdivision, they should think about plants, you know, trees around it. So that talking about flooding and all those things. So, so many things and about mining in the Philippines, all these issues, and that should be taken into a whole new, you know, perspective. Look at it because we cannot just keep on thinking of asking for donation for the typhoon victims. We need to really work on it, you know, do something about it. It's not just giving help. So right. let's do something, you know, the government, the people will be able to help together. That's true. I hear you. And uh, I think it's about time. So, Narima, I, I, 
I got some updates from you. So will you give us an update from the Minister of International Development, Karina Gold? That is good news. Oh, yes. Um, in fact, I received that a few days ago already. Um, but um, I withheld the information for, um, for a while. I was hoping that our fundraiser would take off. And right now we are um, halfway um, actually passed um, the halfway halfway of the uh, the uh, goal of our fundraiser and um, yes that was a very good news from uh, my my MP here in Surrey uh, from the ministry and uh, telling us that the Canadian government has already um, made a donation uh, on behalf of Red Cross uh, and it's uh, of course directed to uh, what we advocated for the dedicated appeal uh, for the Philippines. So there are two donations made. Uh, initially when uh, Typhoon Goni, the Super Typhoon 1, uh, I believe it's November 1st when it landed in the Philippines so they made a donation right after that and when Typhoon Bam Vamco um, made the landfall they uh, added another forty thousand dollars if i'm not mistaken that's, that's amazing that's just an addition you know what ladies you know can you just please make an appeal to our friends and supporters and and how to send their donation to your to your cause like to, to the canadian red cross through your initiative and of course we also um would like to acknowledge uh, one other leader who's one of the organizers, which is Kuya Alvin, who cannot join us uh, today because he's very busy working, <laughs> making a living. So um, can you get, okay, let's, let's wear our Santa hats. You have your Santa hats there? I have to wear this. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like that. Look at this. Um, yes, Luisa, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the fundraiser was specifically on Facebook, and I would just like to uh, note that the reason why we put it on Facebook is because Facebook is not charging any fee whatsoever for any donation uh, made to a charitable organization like the Canadian Red Cross. And so that's where the decision came from. And it has been ongoing for the past two weeks, and we have another two weeks until um, we plan to have it until December 14th. That would be um, in preparation for um, Christmas, and we are hoping that um, our donation would make it in time for the survivors for Christmas, if not New Year's Eve. You know how important the uh, the occasion is for the uh, the Philippines, and so we are appealing to our uh, fellow Filipinos, fellow Filipino Canadians, and also the friends of the Filipino community, if you can, at the uh, very core of your heart and the depth of your pockets, uh, share a little bit of something. I know we are in a pandemic times too, but uh, every little bit counts. Um, so, umaasa po kami sa mga kababayan natin na nakikinig ngayon. We have two more weeks. I believe Louisa will put the um, the link here on screen where you can put your donation. And for all our friends uh, in Canada, the very generous, beautiful Canada, we are appealing for your help. And thank you so much in advance for all your donation. Yes, to all our friends uh, across Canada and all my friends on Facebook, would like to appeal to you with your generosity and kindness once more um, to support the fundraising for the Philippine uh, typing victims in the Philippines. And uh, through the uh, our Facebook uh, online donation that goes directly to the Canadian Red Cross. I know it's a really hard times, uh, but I know there's still some people that no matter how much you want to put in, you know, it can add up. And so it will be very, very helpful for all our Kababayans that are actually suffering, especially at this time of the year. So any amount can, you know, will help. It adds up. Maraming yes. salamat po. Oh, any amount will help. We appreciate your wonderful effort to 
help the typhoon victims in the Philippines. Uh, thank you, Narima de la Cruz. Thank you, Trini Lopez. And thank you, Kuya Alvin, we miss you. Okay, so please send your donation right now. Right now, you have two weeks, please. Send your donation right now to the fundraiser for typhoon survivors in the Philippines through the Canadian Red Cross. to relive the music. A brand new, one-of-a-kind show that takes the audience through music history, trivia, and memories of the 50s and 60s. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy the show. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Please don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Always be kind. Let's stop bullies and the coronavirus. Don't forget to wash your hands. Wear a mask. Stay safe. Um, see you next week. Bye-bye.